Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. In today's video, I am very excited to finally be working on another screen cap redraw for you from one of my absolute favorite series of all time, Avatar The Last Airbender. For those of you who don't know, on my channel, every few months or so, I like to recreate screenshots from some of my favorite TV shows, movies, and I even did a music video one time. And I find that in doing this, it's a great way for me to learn something new, whether it be composition, use of color, style, etc. It's overall just a great way for me to practice my drawing and painting skills without having to use as much brain power. Plus, it gives me a great opportunity to use the video as a way for me to low key turn this into a podcast so that I can fangirl in the voiceover. So feel free to bust out your own art supplies or craft and let's have a chill creative session together. But before we continue, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. As a creative who is always looking to evolve and adapt to new things, Squarespace is such a great platform in the fact that it is so flexible in what it can offer. You can have a portfolio, an online shop, a blog, you name it, and I'm sure they've got a template ready for it. As a video creator, I really appreciate being able to have my YouTube videos directly on my website, and I'm so thankful that I don't need to know how to code to update my website really easily. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. So for today's screen cap recreation, I was actually pretty torn about whether I wanted to use watercolor or gouache. I had actually even considered using both, like I would use watercolor first and then I would use gouache on top. But in the end, I decided to go with gouache because there was just something about this very first screenshot that I chose specifically that I think just screamed gouache to me. I think maybe it's the really like rich color palette and there's something about this style of animation that I think really suits gouache, especially the characters, which are basically, you know, solid colors with the cell shading. So in that sense, gouache to me makes a little bit more sense. And maybe this is also my brain kind of recalling to the fact that a lot of the times, at least with Ghibli films anyway, the backgrounds were painted with poster paints, which essentially is a gouache. So maybe that's why my kind of in my subconscious, I think that gouache makes more sense for this kind of style of illustration. But in any case, another thing too, is that with gouache, when you water it down enough, it can have a similar effect to watercolor. So in any case, we decided to go with gouache. And for today's video, I am using the Arteza gouache, Arteza gouache, which is a regular student grade. Uh, regular gouache, meaning that when it dries, it can reactivate as opposed to an acrylic gouache, which dries permanent. And then student grade, meaning that it's fairly affordable paint in comparison to a professional grade gouache, which is gonna be a lot pricier. I don't think I've actually talked too much about my thoughts on this gouache before, even though I've had it for a number of years now and I've used it quite a lot. I personally enjoy using them for casual sketchbook sessions like the one you're watching here and for things that I'm not really that invested in, I guess. The set that I have has 60 tubes, which is a lot and so, because of that, I don't feel bad about using up the paints for studies and kind of experiments and sketchbook things like this, since there's such a large abundance of paint for such an affordable price. And full transparency, I did receive these for free from Arteza, but um, this is not sponsored by them or anything like that. But yeah, overall, I don't think anyone really needs 60 colors. That kind of is overkill. I don't even think I've technically even used all of the, all of the colors that are available in this set. 
but I do think that the paint performs well enough for beginners or hobbyists. It is also probably a good place to start if you find that you're intimidated with mixing your own colors, since of course there are so many options that it, you know, probably will yield most of the colors that you'll need, even though in my case, I still mix my own colors regardless. And yeah, so in getting a set like this that has tons of colors, it allows you to focus more on practicing how to actually handle the paint itself first. And then, you know, when you're more comfortable with the medium and you've decided you really enjoy gouache, you can invest in higher quality paints. In which case, when you take that route, I would definitely recommend buying just a handful of colors like the primaries, a black and a white and things like that so that you're not blowing all of your money and also then you can actually get into the nitty gritty of learning how to mix your colors. And I'm not gonna dive into the details of mixing paints, but I will say that generally when you mix paints, you don't wanna mix too many together anyways because then that ends up muddying up the colors. So anyways, that's my thoughts on this particular gouache. Uh, when it comes to professional grade gouache, I've only had experience with the Winsor & Newton in terms of like just regular professional grade gouache. I really like it, but I've also heard good things about Holbein as well, which I do love the Holbein acrylic gouache. So I'm sure that the regular one is good quality as well. Of course, I'm sure there are lots of other options on the market that I don't know about. It really just depends on what's more readily available for you, depending on where you live and what's, you know, at your local art supply store or what is available to you online. And then when it comes to paintbrushes in this video, I'm using the Craftimo ones as well as the Princeton snap brushes. Most of them are rounds and then I have one flat brush. And honestly, I'm really not that particular about brands. I find that when it comes to brushes, I generally go for synthetic ones that are kind of in a mid range, like not the cheapest thing that you can find, but also not crazy expensive. I find that synthetic kind of nylon ones are the most versatile when it comes to using them across lots of mediums, such as gouache, watercolors, inks, acrylics, you know, she's a multimedia person. So I want to just get as much use out of my brushes as possible. And I admit I'm not like the best with cleaning them. I do make sure I rinse them, but I don't really do like the soap washing of the brushes very often. And so that's another reason why I don't often go for really high-end expensive paint brushes because I don't take as good of care of them. So I would feel really bad if I ruined really expensive paint brushes. And yeah, I find that they work just fine. I think that if you have paint brushes that are super soft, they might not be very good for gouache because you do need them to hold their shape enough so that they can handle like the weight of the paint. Super soft paintbrushes I find are more suited for watercolors or if you're using it just to like blend colors together. And then for the palette, this is a beautifully handmade palette from the brand Sugar Ceramics Co. I love the speckled finish and there's lots of little wells to divide my various color mixtures. And as you probably saw, I had plenty of dried up paint from previous painting sessions that I just reactivate with water to use again. And this is definitely one of my favorite things or features about water soluble paints and gouache. I love being able to use every last bit of paint and it's nice to, you know, have some colors that are pre-mixed if it calls for it in the, in the painting which by the way, you've probably seen throughout the footage already, but I use a plastic bottle that has like a narrow kind of nozzle on the end that is just filled with tap water that I use to add water to the paint to dilute it and reactivate it when it's dry. 
And yeah, there's nothing special about it. I just prefer to dilute my paints this way because it one is completely clean water that isn't contaminated by me washing my paintbrush in it and also i find that it gives me good control over the amount of water i'm adding at a time as always all of the art supplies i use will be listed in the description down below if you want to know more details as for the actual screen cap here in case you happen to be watching this and you are not familiar Avatar The Last Airbender is an animated TV series made by Nickelodeon, and while it is an American series, it draws heavy influence from many Asian cultures for its universe and as well for its animation style and character design. I would definitely say it feels very anime adjacent, and so if for whatever reason you haven't seen this series yet and you happen to like anime, I highly, highly recommend it. And I mean, even if you don't watch anime, I have said this many times before and I pretty much never fail to find any kind of excuse to talk about this series, but I think that it's phenomenal and I think that you should watch it if you haven't. And if you've already seen it, you should watch it again. <laughs> The scene here is of the core group from season one, which is Aang, Katara, and Sokka. In this screen cap, they are wearing masks as they make their way through what I believe is a Fire Nation festival. This scene in particular isn't all that significant to the story or the characters, but I chose it because I really loved the composition and the colors. I think that the contrast of the really dark blue sky and the very warm toned buildings and then the little string lights throughout, it looks so good together. And I also really love that this is another opportunity for me to practice more involved backgrounds. You know, like many character artists, I am somebody who feels very intimidated by approaching more elaborate backgrounds and the only way to get over that fear is just to do it and get more experience with it. And while I definitely think it's very important and I would say also essential to also use real life references, whether it be from photos or plein air, there, I do think that there is a lot to learn from studying animation backgrounds. Composition definitely being a big one since this is specifically designed by an artist and so the layout and the composition of it is very well thought out, but as well as the stylistic choices and potentially elements that are rooted in fantasy rather than reality, which you would never really get from real life. And I find that with this particular screenshot, I really like this composition because you can see that both the string lights and the arch behind them both lead your eye to the characters who are the focal point of the scene and then the balance of having the little bits of gray and blue on all three characters help them stand out against this otherwise very warm toned foreground and midground and this is something that you know would have been very intentionally made by the concept artists or the storyboard artists and I don't know about you, but there have been many instances when I look through concept artwork for TV shows and movies, and oftentimes I think, wow, the concept art is so much richer and visually interesting than the final outcome. Which, of course, it is inevitable since painting a still image versus having an animation sequence where you have to think about logistically having to animate this scene obviously it's going to be a lot different and they have to kind of mini minimize any stray details that might not be essential but that being said i feel like this particular shot it feels so similar to concept art but they actually managed to bring it to the actual show and this is just me spewing information that I've sort of gathered from consuming art books and 
YouTube videos and stuff. I have never worked in the animation industry, nor have I studied animation in school. So I could be a little bit inaccurate in the things that I'm saying right now. But basically what I'm saying is I really love looking through concept art and I actually have a number of concept art books, particularly a lot of Ghibli ones. And for years I've been meaning to pick up the art of Avatar The Last Airbender because I'm sure it's full of amazing and creative work and I, as I've said, it's like one of my favorites so I'm kind of surprised that it's taken me so long to actually pick it up. I would especially be interested to see the various character designs in their development stage. I always find that to be particularly fascinating. Like, for example, I had read that Toph, who is a headstrong female character introduced in the second season, originally was actually supposed to be a male character. And so knowing this, it is especially funny that in the episode where the core group watch a play about themselves, Toph's actor in the play is being uh, played by like a buff man, which I think is really hilarious and like a fun nod to those initial plans and also again knowing this now and understanding her character I just think it's really really funny that they had kind of went that route and basically probably didn't change much of her personality and I love that and I think that has is a big part of why people love her character so much because she kind of she doesn't really fit a lot of the stereotypical feminine character tropes. Which of course, having a female character display traditional female traits is not a bad thing, but I think because Katara sort of fills that role in certain ways, like her being kind of maternal and kind of having that like caregiving and healing role, it's a great balance to introduce Toph as something totally different and so it creates a really good and interesting dynamic between all the different characters, which is definitely a huge kind of contributor to why this series is so beloved and why I personally love it so much is that they did a really good job at having a well-rounded group of characters. And so I'm sure that for most people watching the series, you can see yourself in at least one of these characters. Which, by the way, if you haven't guessed already, Sokka has always been and will probably always be my favorite character from this series. And I have been with this show from basically the very beginning. Here in Canada, we didn't have a Nickelodeon channel, but rather this TV network called YTV that would play Nickelodeon shows. And I remember watching Avatar The Last Airbender as it was airing on TV every Saturday morning. And I will say there is something kind of thrilling about having to catch your favorite series on TV week after week. It kind of almost feels like an event. But overall, I definitely am grateful to be now living in a streaming world because it definitely is just a lot more convenient to be able to watch movies and TV whenever it suits my schedule. Because, yeah, it was so stressful if something came up during the airtime of your TV show and if you missed it, you would have no way of watching the episode later. And so I was pretty often dedicated to certain shows, so I would schedule my life around their air times if I could. Although that was much easier to do when, you know, I was young and had very few commitments other than school, basically. But anyways, now as a proper responsible adult, instead of watching one episode a week, I can completely disregard everything and watch an entire series in one sitting. <laughs> 
So for those of you who are particularly observant, you might have noticed that now we've started the second screen cut recreation and suddenly there is a kind of secret looking painting on the other side of this sketchbook spread. And so, yeah, in between working on the first screen cap and the second one here, I actually did a third one that I filmed for my Patreon page. And if you don't know, over on my Patreon page, every month I make an exclusive video and I made a poll earlier in the month asking my patrons if they wanted to see me do a gouache process of a screenshot or if they would prefer I worked on a marker and color pencil portrait and the screenshot in gouache was the winner so yeah I did another screen cap redraw um, from Avatar The Last Airbender but this time it was a background from the Northern Water Tribe. Most of the video is in real time with me narrating as I'm painting where I provide insight into my thought process with the colors, the values, and just my general thoughts on the piece. And yeah, I put a piece of tracing paper on top to protect it while I work on this and so that I could put the palette on top and, you know, prevent it from getting smudged. And yeah, it, it turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I, again, want to practice backgrounds more so it was a good opportunity to do that and also I think that it was really fun to work in a monochromatic color palette which is not something I do very often and so it really allowed me to focus on the values and the subtle shifts of hues within one color and yeah I really enjoyed working on it and how it turned out. I also I really love working with blue I just think it's such a calm color and I think that there's a lot of depth that you can create with like deep dark indigo blues and when it's paired with these like light periwinkle colors it just looks so nice. But anyways back to talking about the actual screen cap you're seeing me work on here. As I mentioned Sokka is one of my favorite characters from the show so when deciding on the second screen cap for this page I knew I wanted to be a more character focused one so initially I thought I was going to do Zuko because I also love him and he has probably one of like the most satisfying character arcs that I've ever witnessed but Sokka is and always will be my number one so I did end up doing Sokka for this screen cap. And yeah, I personally find it really fun to interpret characters in my own style. And I really enjoy seeing other artists' interpretations of characters. It's just fun to see them in a different way. And it really is a testament to character design as well when the character is still very recognizable, even if they are in a different style than they originally were in which I think that's a piece of advice I've given before when people ask me about the struggle of, you know, art style inconsistency and they worry about not getting their original characters to look the same every time they draw them. And I'm, I'm definitely somebody who is pro art style change. I don't think there's anything wrong with having slight inconsistencies or having multiple art styles. And so my advice for that is that so long as your character design is really strong, then they should still be pretty recognizable regardless of the art style that they're in. And yeah, I admittedly made Sokka look a little bit older here, which I'm not mad about. I didn't really, I didn't set out with the intention of making him look older. That just sort of happened. And yeah, originally I, when I drew his kind of torso and his arms, they, I think they were closer to what the actual screenshot was, but it just, it looked so bizarre to me, like the proportions. I know that obviously the art style and his age in the show reflect kind of the proportions of like the head being kind of large in comparison to the body, but in my style, which leans a slightly more realistic than the the series, I found he just kind of looked too bobblehead-esque, so I ended up making the torso and the arms bigger, which in turn makes him look a lot older. So it's fine. I'm, I'm not mad at it. 
Something that I was more concerned about though was losing the essence of the sketch as I painted because I was really happy with how the sketch turned out and oftentimes my sketch versus the final painting, especially when it comes to gouache, ends up being a little different and I often end up liking the sketch more than the actual painting. And a tip that I need to remind myself of is to take a photo of the line art or the sketch prior to painting. That way I have it to reference as I'm kind of going through the process. And so I can hopefully try and maintain the sketch and keep it intact as much as possible. Of course, it's always going to change slightly. And obviously when you add in shading and stuff, it does alter the way that the, the sketch looks. But yeah, overall, I'm like pretty happy with how he turned out. So I think that taking the photo really helped with that. And with the actual painting process, I was really struggling with the skin tone because I just, I was finding I couldn't get the skin tone quite right. And I realized that part of the reason why I find mid to dark skin tones so challenging to paint with regular gouache particularly is because with more saturated shades, the gouache color shift is much more drastic. And so when I initially lay down the paints, it looks quite different to when it's dry. So like the wet to dry transition is much more pronounced. And so a lot of the times, and this painting session was no exception, I have, I mix a bunch of colors, I swatch them, and then I just sort of like in a panic, slap down a bunch of paint and hope for the best. And yeah, I don't know, somehow eventually after it's dry and after, you know, a couple rounds of paint, it looks okay somehow and I'm like how did I get here it's kind of magical in a way it's almost as if I like black out and then suddenly I'm like oh we made it out <laughs> it's uh it's definitely one of those trust the process type of moments So the reason why Sokka has always been my favorite character is because there is just something so relatable about a guy who on the surface is completely ordinary amongst a group of peers who are extraordinary, but still manages to hold his own and contribute in a meaningful way. I, you know, I really appreciate an underdog character and I definitely think that Sokka who is a non-bender in a group of characters who are benders really fits that underdog role. And, you know, instead of being born with this incredible ability to manipulate the elements, he uses his intellect and creative problem solving to aid and support the other characters throughout their journey. And I just think that's very admirable and just is definitely, you know, relatable as like an everyman character. And of course, my second favorite character is Zuko. Like I mentioned earlier, he has one of the most satisfying character arcs that I've gotten to witness. And there's just so many layers to how they crafted his character. And now that I've seen the show like a million times, I can see that they made a point to show hints of the good in Zuko, even in the first season when generally the audience is meant to view him as a villain. And so I think in doing that, his transition from antagonist to protagonist isn't like a shock. It feels natural and it makes sense. And I also appreciate that it's not perfectly linear, linear either. Like halfway through the series, he goes back and forth between making good and bad choices, which I think makes his growth feel all the more believable because people generally don't change overnight. And so I just love the gradual development that he has throughout the series. And as I mentioned earlier, I think that really contributes to why I love this series so much is that they do such a really good job at making all of the characters feel really well-rounded. And on top of that, it's also, you know, part of a universe and plot that is so rich and engaging. And I noticed that I definitely prefer character driven stories. And so when the characters are written in a way that makes them endearing and relatable, I just immediately am so much more invested. And unfortunately, I think this is one of the reasons why I think I didn't love The Legend of Korra, which is the sequel series. And I think a lot of it is because 
I felt like a lot of the characters were either one dimensional or they were inconsistent or just overall weren't very likable. And admittedly, it's been a long time since I've seen the series. So my critique of it is just sort of based off a distant memory at this point. But yeah, I also didn't love the format of the storytelling either because each season kind of had its own plot and they were like all self-contained. Whereas with Avatar, the whole series had a, mo a major overarching plot with various subplots throughout. And that isn't really at the fault of the creators because I did hear that with Korra, they were only given one season at a time. And so that is really limiting in what they could do with the story and the characters because they didn't know if they were going to be renewed for another season. And so it does make me wonder what the series could have looked like had they been just given, you know, three seasons right off the bat. That being said though, I am feeling extremely hopeful about the news that they left the live action adaptation and are now going to be working on an Avatar animated studio because really as a longtime fan, that's what I really want. I don't need the live action retelling. I am more interested in exploring new avenues within this world in animation because this medium just works so much better for this series. I personally would love it if we got more content based on the original Avatar gang, but like as young adults. Or I've also heard really good things about the Kyoshi graphic novel series, so I would definitely be down to see that animated as well. But yeah, anyways, the video is coming to a close now. I hope that you enjoyed the video and special shout out to those of you who made it all the way to the end to let me know you made it this far. Let me know in the comments if you got to choose what kind of bender would you want to be? Personally, I would want to be a waterbender. But yeah, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.